Welcome to Academia once again. Today we shall study modified Ampere's law. Now the questions that hit us first are who modified Ampere's law and why? It was James Clerk Maxwell who modified the Ampere's law. He was a visionary mathematician who postulated and modified laws without even experimental evidence and became a legend by predicting the existence of something which is known as electromagnetic wave today. Let's see how he predicted it. He already knew that Faraday stated time varying magnetic field produces electric field. Maxwell simply proposed that the converse is also true. That is, if time varying magnetic field can produce electric field, then time varying electric field can also produce magnetic field. This theory of his led to the concept of displacement current which was validated later by experiments. Now how did his theory of converse of Faraday's law gave birth to the concept of displacement current? What is this displacement current actually? All of us from our previous classes already know the charging procedure of capacitor. Two parallel metal plates supplied with a DC voltage source and a variable resistor with an ammeter in series. Nothing in between. That is perfect dielectric medium. So no current can flow between these plates since dielectric cannot conduct electricity as we already know. From this setup we also know that the ammeter reads the charging current flowing in this circuit. Since the wire in this circuit is conducting this electric current, hence this charging current is called conduction current IC. But there is a strange thing happening in this circuit. IC current enters this left plate but no current leaves this left plate. Similarly, IC current is leaving this right plate but no current entered it. So there is a discontinuity in the path of flow of current due to the presence of this dielectric here. This phenomenon directly contradicts KCL Kirchhoff's current law which says current entering a junction must be equal to the current leaving the junction. Now to preserve this principle of continuity of current that is KCL, Maxwell proposed the existence of a fictitious current in this dielectric space between the metal plates which is same in magnitude and direction of flow of conduction current IC. It can be considered to be simply a continuation of real conduction current from left plate to this right plate across this dielectric space. He named this fictitious current displacement current ID. But how his proposition of converse of Faraday's law led to the conclusion of existence of this fictitious current called displacement current. He took the help of Ampere circuital law and modified it to support his proposition. Ampere said a steady electric current can produce a steady magnetic field around it. The steady electric current in this case being conduction current IC. So existence of magnetic field near a current carrying wire suggests that conduction current is present in the wire. Long, long time after Maxwell proposed his modification, experiment showed the presence of a magnetic field in the neighborhood of this free dielectric space. Ampere's law suggests that there must be flow of electric current in this free space to support the production of magnetic field. But dielectric space itself being a non-conductor of electricity cannot conduct conduction current through it. The displacement current ID may serve the purpose by saying this current is responsible for the production of magnetic field there. But the truth is 
this is just a fictitious current it does not exist in reality then how come magnetic field was produced there in spite of absence of any real current maxwell argued there is another method of production of magnetic field and it is the presence of time varying electric field wait in the presence of time varying electric field so time varying electric field is present here where just take a breath try to recall the class of charging phenomenon of capacitor in the charging process the charges on this metal plates were gradually increasing with time now we know electric field e between two parallel metal plates is equal to sigma by epsilon naught where sigma is charge density and epsilon naught is permittivity of the medium here since charge gradually increases in the charging procedure with time so charge density sigma also increases with time since sigma is a time varying quantity so electric field e is definitely time varying in nature so time varying electric field is present here so it validates maxwell's argument of production of magnetic field here but no actually maxwell did not live to see this validation of his theory but this genius opened a new domain in physics to explore it is electromagnetic wave how did he do that very simple faraday said time varying magnetic field induces a proportional emf that is potential difference between the ends of a conductor that is voltage mathematically voltage v is equal to minus del phi b del t phi b is magnetic flux which can be written as surface integration of magnetic flux density b so in place of phi b it can be written as surface integration of b dot ds since the order of differentiation or integration is independent of each other so the order of differentiation integration here is reversed we already know v is equal to closed line integration of e dot dl by stokes theorem this closed line integration of e dot dl can be written as the surface integration of curl of e so by comparing curl of e is equal to minus del b del t it is the differential form of faraday's law of electromagnetic induction we already know that the voltage produced here is time varying in nature we also know e equals to minus grad v so electric field e is also time varying in nature since v is time varying that is a time varying magnetic field induces a time varying electric field wait maxwell just argued that time varying electric field also produces magnetic field which also turns out to be time varying in nature so it should again produce a time varying electric field which in turn produces time varying magnetic field and so on so it is a regenerative cumulative reinforcing procedure time varying electric field and magnetic fields are not independent of each other they remain coupled to each other and regenerate each other and that too in the absence of any medium in free space we just saw it this electromagnetic disturbance can be created thus in free space and can propagate through it in the form of electromagnetic wave there you go a new branch in physics just open to you right now how does this electromagnetic wave propagate we shall learn that in our coming classes gradually thank you oops wait i just forgot why i came here you must have forgotten to right i was here to provide you the modified form of ampere's law here it is ampere said 
closed line integration of h dot dl is equal to ic but if this is just conduction current what happens inside the capacitance in the free space where magnetic field has also been experimentally proved to exist to account for that maxwell introduced the fictitious current called displacement current id right so closed integration of h dot dl is basically ic plus id when the current through this wire is concerned id is zero so it is ic only when this dielectric space is concerned ic is zero so it is id only and we know ic is equal to id so the sum ic plus id always has the same value the constant value along the entire path thus preserving the property of continuity of current along any closed path though individually neither ic nor id is continuous ic can be written as ic equals to dq dt that is rate of change of charge accumulating on the plates we also know the electric field between these two plates is e equal to sigma by epsilon not where sigma is charge density so it is charge per unit area q by a a for the area of the plate so differentiating both sides with respect to q we get this so de is equal to this wait from this relation we can write dq is equal to ic dt so from this relation ic can be written as this since epsilon not is constant for this medium it can easily go inside this differentiation now we already know d is equal to epsilon not e so ic is equal to a d d dt since ic is equal to id so id is equal to a d d dt so id by a is equal to gd the displacement current density since d is both a function of space and time so this derivative of d with respect to time must be partial derivative so jd is equal to del d del t since d is a vector so jd is also a vector now this ic can be written as surface integration of j dot ds j being the conduction current density and this id can be written as the surface integration of jd jd being displacement current density since in both cases the area over which the integration is done is the same area of metal plate so combining these two we can write surface integration of j plus jd dot ds by stokes theorem we have already seen this now by comparing this two we get curl of h equals to j plus jd where jd has been calculated as del d del t this is modified ampere's law with this modification maxwell introduced his four equations of electromagnetism one divergence of d is equal to rho v borrowed from divergence theorem as we have already calculated in our earlier class two divergence of b is equal to zero application of divergence theorem on magnetic field this to be calculated in our earlier class number 3 is this differential form of faraday's law of electromagnetic induction and finally four this modified ampere's law so all of them can together be called as maxwell's equation of electromagnetic wave maxwell's equations of electromagnetism thank you don't forget to leave your feedback in the comments below and tell us how do you like our classes so if you wish to attend our offline classes you are most welcome to visit our tutorial home at new godia near kavishubash metro station so the students of west bengal university of technology popularly known as wbut can subscribe to the youtube channel of pandora's reel 
and can avail all the classes for free.